Oftentimes, there are situations where you need to join a smaller diameter tube into a larger piece. In this simulation, we want to demonstrate the ease of preparing a one and a half inch tube to match up and make ready to weld between a pair of larger two and three quarter inch mainframe tubes. First of all, we've cut a section of tube to sufficient length and laid across the two main frames, placing it where we need it, and use a large spring clamp to hold it in position. We measure both acute angles and make note of it. In this case, both angles are about 45 degrees. We attach a snap collar locator onto the tube with the back of the collar facing the acute angle and slide it to line up at the intersection of the two tubes. It's important to position ourselves at a 90 degree viewing angle to make sure we're as accurate as possible. We use a felt pen to mark this intersection where the notch will begin. Mark the other end in the same manner and we'll leave the collar on the tube turned toward the acute angle to remind us later on which side to begin our second notch. It is very easy to get confused at that point, so keeping the collar on the tube will help us stay on the straight and narrow. A trick we've found helpful is to picture the larger tubes as big long hole saws as though they would be doing the cutting. It just helps make it clear in our mind of what the end results will look like. And we're ready to make the first notch. Since we're out in the field, we've rigged up a mobile receiving hitch to set our notch onto. We fitted our SYNC 180 with the optional lift kit so we can use hole saws larger than 2.5 inch that is normally the maximum size. With the lift kit, we now have the capacity to use hole saws up to 4 inches. We'll be using a 2 and 3 quarter today since that is the size we'll be fitting the 1.5 inch tube up against. We set the angle to 45 degrees and place the tube in the jaws and line up our first mark. Since we're away from any power source, we'll use our cordless drill. It doesn't quite have the power as an electric, but it'll get the job done. When the hole saw bottoms out, we easily reposition the swing arm 180 degrees using the 180 jig as a guide. Now that we've made the first notch, it's important that the second notch be cut in the same plane. So here's what we do to accomplish that. First of all, find center line and make a reference mark by using the handy center line finder. Next, take the tube out of the jaws and place it on any flat surface. Relocate the top center line. And as you make sure that the tube does not roll or rotate, find top center line near the other end and mark it for a reference. Slide the snap collar out of the way if it's interfering. It is only there to remind you which side to start the next notch.
place the tube back into the jaws and position it to match up the reference point. The vertical line with the edge of the hole saw and the horizontal mark we just made with a center finder. Use the finder again if you're not comfortable with just eyeballing the mark. And a good reminder is to always check and clear any pieces that might be lodged inside the hole saw from a previous cut. A piece left in there could wreak serious havoc on a hole saw, or even worse, could sprain your wrist when it catches during a cut. So get in the habit of always checking. Complete the second notch, and let's see how we did. Looks like we cut the original length of the tube a bit too short. That's why we didn't bottom out with a hole saw this time like we did on the first notch. But that's not too much of a problem. Let's try moving the piece over just a bit and take off a thin slice. If our marks were off just a bit, or our measured angle was off a bit, we're still in a good position to dress it up easily to make a close fit. That should about do it. The piece is just about ready to weld in place.